I've been here, but I have a few questions. So you got to give your name and address. Uh, I, don't, I forget my name, but I live at uh, 198 Gallup Hill Road. Joe Lozier. Sorry. <laughs> Mary, how are you? It's been a long time since you've been here. You can't remember yeah, that part. can't remember that part back. A couple things. I was in the post office the other day, and this lady came up to me, and uh, yes, she thought I was still involved. And uh, she was yelling and uh, screaming because there was no water at the trailer park, and I'll call it a trailer park, and it was nice. 
Uh, I wanted to get here early to see when my picture was up there because I forget uh, when I was here when I was on the council. But at that point in time, we were told by the WPCA that uh, you know we had to we had to take that thing over because it was imperative because uh, you know they needed water. They still don't have water. Uh, I guess that it's coming and it should be here relatively soon. Uh, but I guess I'm looking for a date. So I, I go to the post office every day to get my bills, and this lady seems to see me there quite frequently. So uh, you know, I, I'd like to be able to tell her a date, or maybe the council or, or somebody could tell her tell her a date. I know that the uh, council was uh, running the WPCA, so they don't have too far to look to uh, wonder why uh, this hasn't been taken care of. Second thing, natural gas. As you all know, you're taking water to Elgin Heights. Okay, it would be a great time for somebody to give uh, Norwich Utilities a call and talk to them about continuing the line off of uh, 2A. It's down almost to uh, the intersection there going up to uh, Sutter Mill. Okay, uh, I know that uh, Yankee Gas has the uh, the ability, not the ability, but the, uh, they have the right to take gas, so no utilities doesn't. So you have to work with, with Yankee Gas. Our governor says that uh, he would like to put natural gas in as many places as he possibly can. So maybe he can help you. You know, maybe our new state senate representative can help you. But, uh, you know, I don't know when they're going to start the water lines in Elgin Heights, but I believe that... Uh, they can go in the same trench. I'm not 100% sure about that, okay? But it, it's, you know, time is of the essence, but you could save those taxpayers a lot of money, and you'd be, they'd be able to uh, to pay the, uh, the water assessment by the amount of money they save. And also, let's face it, I mean, uh, the town owns land there. You put a fueling station there and switch our trucks over. So there's a lot of things you could do to save money. I know government likes to spend money, but there's some things that, you, they, that we should be able to do to save money. One more thing, and then I'll go home. Uh, the city of Groton, I guess now, takes care of our water. Is this a uh, money-saving saving situation or not? Uh, I like to sub out as many things as I possibly can, but if it costs us money, you know, it's not, not that good of a deal. I'd like to know, uh, and I'm sure a lot of the residents would like to know, how much it's costing us. When I see all those brand new trucks riding around with two or three men in them, you know, this is the city of Groton, I'm in our town, I know it's costing me money. And I'd like to know if we're saving money. And if they, if they want our water, I was going to say give them more, but I'm not going to say that, you know, let them have our, let them have our sewage. You know, if they want it, if they want to, Take care of it. Let them take care of it. Let them take care of both. I don't know if that's ever been looked at. A couple more things, and I'll, I promise I'll leave. Uh, we're not using the well down the law office any longer. We we got a deal on that, and uh, maybe uh, well, it's not Mystic Valley water anymore. They every two or three years they sell it so they can raise my water rates on Cow Hill, but uh, that's another story. Uh, you know, maybe maybe uh, I think it's Aquarium then. Aquarius. What is it? Aquarium. Yeah, that's, that's that story. And, you know, why not? Why keep something that, that I don't think we're going to use? You know, we've been told for years that there's problems with that well. I never thought there was, but uh, but maybe maybe uh, maybe somebody else would be interested in it. You know, I'm not going to hang around, but I'd like to have an answer to a couple of those questions if I could. And uh, I appreciate your, uh, your service. Uh, it's not easy sitting there sometimes especially when it goes to uh, 12, 30, 1 o'clock in, in the morning. But uh, I thank you for your service. Thank you, and I think we can get some of the, all of those questions answered for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we never got to get that tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, name's Larry Helfridge, 26 Cliff Road, Stone Gate Village. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to pass out the package. It uh, would make this uh, presentation go much faster. And it would inform some of the new members as to what's going on. I'm not here to ask the uh, 
to ask any papers or ask any action, but just to inform you as to what's going on and the copy. Okay? Okay. So it will go very quickly and it will go very fast. Uh, as those who know and those who don't know, God Homes applied to uh, uh, convert Soulgate Village into affordable housing development development and the elimination of 55, the age restriction. Uh, <clears throat> residents were very pleased with the vote, which uh, improved Stonegate Village into affordable housing development, but retained the age restriction. What we can understand, if you go to page two, is the notice we had gotten earlier from Garden Homes Management, which I turned out. Does Garden Homes need my consent? as an owner to remove the uh, age restriction, and two, does the garden home need the town's consent to remove the age restriction? In both cases, it's yes. I can't understand why they filed it without getting our approval, but that's the nature of garden's home's operation. We turn to second section. Garden home then went uh, back to the zoning board, and they wanted a 50 Eight stage retired mobile home manufacturing community, which is Stonegate, and B, to take away from that and take a 22 site, all age, restricted mobile home manufacturing community called Legend Commons, which makes the present Stonegate community center in its parking lot part of Legend Commons. Uh, if you turn over the page, uh, first of all, the vote approved the 22 no. no Mobile manufacturing home development up with a 55 age restriction. You look at the site plan on the other, you will see legend comments to your left. What they did is, if you notice, A, that is where the community center, they actually, Garden Homes wants to make the community center part of the legend comments, which they cannot do, do according to our lease. Second, part of uh, all the way, which is the entrance, uh, becomes part of Legend Commons. Then there is a road marked in red, which would have to be common shared because Garden Homes wants that the area B, uh, storage area, to be part of Legend Commons. In effect, what it would be would say there's no more Stone Gate Village because there's no way you can separate, physically separate the two. Okay, let's go to, I said this to be fast. Let's go to the quick summary. Uh, Garden Homes filed a complaint with the Superior Court. Most noticeable is on page uh, 26, paragraph 26, page 5 of the complaint. Catch. Which David, or you can read it, David Trance proved said that removing the age restriction will increase the viability of the uh, Stone Gate Village. You get rid of age and you can sell more homes. Well, on the attachment, you know, uh, well recognized there are successful age restricted developments in Connecticut. My research focused on failed developments. In other words, he didn't look at local successful age restricted developments. And that is the only professional help that was quoted in the complaint. He had two others but they failed so miserable, he, they didn't mention the complaint. Uh, among the reasons why, and I listened, and that we believe that limited the viability of the age restricted community, one, know, is, one we all know is the economy. Second, Garden Homes President has stated that location, location, location has nothing to do with the sale of a house. The only thing that will sell the houses, those houses are prices. He built two houses, one was sold last, two model homes, and they were never sold. One was eventually sold in August, but someone couldn't wait for this new development for the Presbyterian Church. The other one they had to rent because they couldn't do it. Every house that was bought was far above the very inexpensive house uh, that they had uh, built as a, as a show house. Second, uh, in the past year, in other words, this full year, they've done no advertising. They put a couple little, what I call, notices in the paper. 
uh, is was no one on premise, nor is it any how is posted the old park, any place posted that they can get a hold of it, the real estate developer. And there's no model home. Now if anybody in the right mind tell you they can't sell a house that way. They are looking forward to saying we can't sell houses, but they definitely are doing this as far as we're concerned, deliberately. They shot themselves in the foot. They will do nothing. They, and everything they do they is wrong. And as far as location, even people who reported to them had advised them to stress the location. I mean, we are a great location. And that was another stress. And then finally, the other day they put a, put in a house, single house, with a 312 roof pitch. And if you go to the last uh, sheet on there, item B. Now this is the lease which they wrote on here. It's even more stringent and more detailed than the lease that their former TGI had. Our home court in the community must be new, has HUD seal, that side and so forth, and a shingle roof with five twelve pitch. Now they said they got a permit, which I believe they did, but there was no nothing on the permit permit for uh, stating what roof it is. Uh, we, we feel we're in for a strong battle with them. Uh, they're testing us by putting this one up, and they know they have no legal grounds. Now the uh, <coughs> this is just for information. Not, we're not asking for any help or anything because we know the limits and the dividing line between the different commissions. But this is just to keep you informed of what's going on. Uh, I moved here five years ago. Uh, I'll be 83 next month. I came here to live, enjoy life, and eventually pass over. But I swear, I'll spend every day I have getting after these people. And they can't get much out of me if they sue me. Almost all the money's in my wife's <laughs> name. So I have nothing to lose on this. And I, I guarantee you, if they don't, come about, and I believe it's all part of, and I know, we all know, it's all part of the president who somehow, some way, never wants to lose. So, anyway, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service on the zoning commission. We're not finished with that. I'll be pleading to come back. I, I miss you out with the boys. It's the only time I get out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find something for you, Larry. Oh, I, I'm still on the left. I, I remember at large at the uh, Pension Town Center. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other resident property owners wish to speak at this time? Hearing none, uh, committee commission or board reports. Comments of town councilors. I'd just like to uh, commend Linda for her handling of the, uh, the events during the, uh, the hurricane. I think she did a fantastic job of disseminating information to the residents, keeping everybody informed, and, uh, and holding down the fort very admirably during the mayor's absence. Thank you. The mayor's strandedness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to be here most right. part of that time. Tomorrow is the uh, last night of um, Know Your Town. It will be held at the Parks and Rec um, Board of Ed building, and it will feature the Board of Ed and Parks and Rec. So we hope that uh, you come to this 7 o'clock. Any other council comments? I have just a couple of items. Um, I would like to um, just do a shout out for Rich Ruciotti who is a coach of Ledger's uh, soccer, uh, Ledger's soccer programs. Um, he uh, coordinated and sought donations of $10,000 for the installation of the two new lighted scoreboards for the boys' soccer program and the girls' soccer program. Uh, so uh, thank him for his efforts. Um, it's, it's always such a pleasure to see how much we do rely and depend on our, our volunteers. Um, as far as the um, event, as you called it, I, I would just like to, um, if I tried to thank people personally, I would, I would miss someone, so I'm not going to do that, but 
I would like to um, say just a special thanks to the police and the emergency services personnel, uh, our public works who did a fine job, I mean, lots of rock stars in their midst. Uh, the staff, who uh, many of whom went well beyond their job descriptions. Um, and then probably finally to the citizens, residents of Ledger, who uh, sure stuck together and accomplished a lot, um, and also to our town councilors who came to volunteer in town hall uh, during the storm. And then one other item I would like to mention, I'm surprised you didn't mention this, Bill, we found Shadow. Uh, Shadow was another dog that was missing for eight weeks, eight weeks, and Peter Morneau um, is the gentleman who ultimately caught, um, or uh, I guess caught the word, the dog by building a um, kind of a hutch up at the, in the Highlands area, and he was able to um, to capture him. Um, you may have anything to well, add there, John? They set up feeding stations because the dogs are going to the pattern. And based on the phone calls and Facebook hits, we can plot where the dog is going. And we set up a feeding station. My wife sets up a feeding station at one of these points. And the reason the dog gets comfortable enough and gets tired enough and just stays there, and then we just walk up and get it. And mm -hmm. Pete got this one. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you say that you plotted the dog's um, path by comments on Facebook, because that's exactly what we did during the hurricane. That's how we knew where the CLMP trucks were. Yeah, Not from CLMP. That's how you caught them. It was Facebook that did that. Anyway, uh, okay, on to the approval of minutes. I make a motion to approve the uh, public hearing meeting minutes and regular meeting minutes of October 24th. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Corrections provided. To call the roll. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrattan? Abstained. Mr. Song? Yes. Mrs. Ludecki? Abstained. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Seven in favor, two abstentions. A motion carries. I have a communications list. There are just two. Um, minor referrals. Um, let's see. Subcommittee liaison reports. Admin committee. Mr. Eichelberg. Uh, let's see. We made a number of appointments tonight. Um, a couple of other items that are going to show up later on. We did talk to uh, we did talk on we did a number of like quite a bit of work on the, the light ordinance. Um, we'll address that later as well. Um, and Again, most of what we talked about will be addressed later. Any questions for Adam? Community services? Yeah, we met uh, last week. I met with uh, LB's representatives, Jake Choi and Nick Bosom. Uh, we usually discuss where LB's is at right now and then where they're heading in the near future. And, and the, the big topic of the meeting was the uh, it's really come together as a unit now with Mercy Services between the two firehouses and the LBs. The relationship between the, the three companies has, has improved immensely in the past few months, uh, both in the building and, and on the scenes. They're really working together quite nicely now. Uh, there's also, the, during the storm, because you're getting together so well now, they're actually hanging out at the firehouse. And there's two full crews available, so it cut down on response time if someone needed so They're there hanging out. Uh, there are open lines of communication between the chiefs and the LBs. That's helping out everywhere. Uh, they also um, they have mutual aid agreements with our surrounding towns in the area. And Mystic River has actually moved them up on the call list based on their performance. They want our guys to respond before someone else does because of performance and overall, uh, I hate to say attitude, but basically performance, stick with performance, has improved so much as Mystic River wants them to respond first before anyone else. They bump them up, so that's a plus for us. Uh, they're hanging out in the building more. They're they're staying around with the improvements they've made. They just want to be there, and they're doing their paperwork on time now, getting the reports in on time. Uh, we're losing less calls and mutual aid. That's a good thing, also. Uh, when word got out that there was a part-time opening in the LBs, Jake was flooded with calls because people wanted to be part of that organization. They could still use more if anyone's interested. 18 are up. More help. And um, that's my report. Any questions?
options for community services. I have a question. I just want to add a comment to that. There was actually a motor vehicle accident at Legend Center, you know, in Legend Center, 17 to 14, Monday night. I, was, I stopped to watch it. I love to see our volunteers in action. You know, Sperry was there, Legend was there, Elvis was there. What a great job they do. If you ever come upon something, you know, just stay way off to the side. Of course, the policeman came over and asked if I witnessed the accident because they were trying to find witnesses. But they did a phenomenal job. And considering it was 5.15 at night when people are trying to drive through this intersection and you've got police in the road and you've got firemen in the road and the fire police direct them, we almost lost a couple of fire police a couple of times because these people drive through, they're really crazy and they don't see them. But professionalism is phenomenal. And I can attest to it, they really worked well together. Legend was there, Gail's Ferry. There was more trucks. You, you had no idea we owned this many trucks. They're all in the center of town. It was really a great thing to watch. And they really are working well together. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. They are losing their grip on Fund 24, which is uh, a fund they have for the ambulance that they generate. And they're talking about um, purchasing more medical equipment for our fire companies and using that money to purchase the uh, striker, I think they know that, that grab system, the pull yeah, stretcher. Yeah, the stretchers, yeah. Right, they're going to buy two of these systems that, in the future, are going to be pretty much standard issue on ambulances. Basically, it's a system that will grab the stretcher and load it in for them. And uh, it's a lot safer than doing it manually for both the patient and the ambulance drivers. Uh, and because of going in with Mr. Griffin, he's saving, uh, I think, $5,000 per unit. We're buying two of them. Any other questions for uh, community service? Finance. Uh, other than what's in the agenda tonight, uh, one topic to about is the <coughs> continuing rollout of the units financial software as uh, most heard, uh, we did roll out the uh, expense side of the Munich software management uh, and funding of the town in July. The payroll side of it will be rolling out in January. And in preparation for that, they'll be running uh, parallel payrolls for Board of Ed and town employees with Munich to validate the, the data that's been entered. So that uh, when one January comes by, we'll have the paycheck not go out and have uh, upset town employees. So it's a good thing we'll have several payrolls uh, to validate the data before we uh, go live. So. Bill, the other thing that came out of that meeting is our audit. We are extending our audit. And I, didn't, and Marcia didn't say why, but I suspect it is this community's rollout because it is taking a lot more time and energy on Marcia's part as well as on Nancy's trying to get into this program. It's a little bit more complicated than they thought it was going to be getting it up and running. But they're both confident that when it's up and running, they're going to like it. It's just getting there. Any other questions for finance? Information technology, Mr. Solomons. Information technology met on uh, November 6th, right after the storm. <laughs> and we took advantage of being right after the storm to invite uh, Lieutenant Finkelstein to come and speak with us about lessons learned from use of technology during the storm. So this is where I was going to post my little pitch for Facebook. Uh, Lilo and Libel, Libel, Shadow, and um, Dax. So, in Ledyard, there is uh, there are a number of uses of Facebook. Um, there is also an emergency alert system called Everbridge, which you can sign up for by going to the Ledyard Town website. And we're really trying to get that word out. But then there are also people who just don't have uh, electronic communications. So we're trying to do a better job of getting the word out, especially in emergencies, to all the people in all of the ways that we can. So um, the first thing that, that Lieutenant, Lieutenant Finkelstein said um, in lessons learned was social media was a huge help in getting the word out to more people during the storm. And that's where we were, we were hearing about CLMP trucks and who had power and who had didn't, where roads were closed. The town was sending out bulletins on Ledyard News. It was posting them on Ledyard's website, and it was also sending them out to the Ledyard Gales Ferry Community Forum on Facebook. So people knew where roads were closed. They knew where trees were down. They knew who had power, who didn't. Where to get water. Where to get water. And towards the end of, of the week, um, the town hall was publishing these, not only where to get water, but where to take showers, where to get meals, where you could stay overnight. It was really a great use of technology. The, um, the thing that I really want to stress is to people 
is to make sure that you sign up for Everbridge on the town website. That sends emergency alerts to your cell phone, your home phone, your email. It'll text you. Any, you're in control. You decide what numbers to get it, give it and how you're going to get your messages. One of the things we learned was that if a household signed up for Everbridge with one account, and there were two people in the house, for example, and each has a cell phone, it would call the first cell phone that you list, and if you said, okay, I got my message, it's not going to call the second one. So every resident should sign up for Everbridge if you want to get these emergency alerts. Secondly, you should have your relatives outside of town sign up for them so they know what's going on in town. Because during a storm, sometimes we're not getting all the alerts, but you want your relatives to know they want to hear from you. It's a good way to get news to them about what's going on in the town. A um, couple other points. Um, I want to second uh, Councillor Allen's comments about what a great job uh, Chairman Davis did as the action, acting mayor. Also, uh, mayoral assistant Mark Bancroft was noted by Lieutenant Finkelstein. Um, and I wanted to comment on a number of people, uh, which have already been mentioned by uh, Chairman Davis. Uh, it really was a great exercise for the town. A um, couple other things that I, I won't go into. I published a really long list in the report. So the report is online. If you go to Ledyard's website, you can see the rest of the lessons that we learned from this use of technology. <coughs> it's a small expense to the town and a really great leap forward. Any questions for IT? I would just add that as far as Everbridge, um, before the storm, we were, I believe, just under 500 users, maybe 500 users. And as the storm approached and we started to get the word out through social media, uh, we were, I believe, at over 1,000 yeah, by the time we, we ended. So um, uh, certainly a good resource for a small amount of money. Okay, let's see. Land Use and Public Works Committee. Kevin. Uh, we also met last week. Uh, we have a couple of items on the agenda to recommend the council accept a couple of roads into the town road inventory and also uh, open space to be uh, added in. That's all I have. Any questions for Lynn? <coughs> uh, Board of Education liaison. Yes, if I could uh, bend your ear for a few minutes because there were actually two meetings last week. And uh, so I'll start with uh, I'll start with one comment regarding uh, the Board of Ed is is also working with the same financial software that the town is. They have uh, they have begun testing it, and they are at this point saying that they're prepared to start using it as of uh, January 2013. So that dovetails into uh, Councillor France's comment on the software. Um, the school-wide asbestos removal is in the final phase this coming summer, so it's been a five-year project, and this is uh, the last summer of year five, so things are going well, and they're under budget on that. Um, Ledger High School was awarded the Michaels Cup for the Class Double M, which is fantastic news for them. Um, it's, a, it's a nice award to receive, and uh, it's based on, it's not just based on wins and losses on the field or on the field of play. It's based on sportsmanship. Uh, participation, which Ledger High School is at 54% of their student athletes participating in a sport, which is well above the, uh, the other area towns. Uh, classroom achievement, drug-free athletes, and, and then finally success on the field. Uh, let's see. Educationally, uh, the AP class enrollments are really going up. Um, that, that program has actually doubled their enrollment in the last two years. So kids are really taking advantage of that. Uh, the number of students taking the PSAT has almost doubled as well from 2010 to 2012. Uh, they're still working on how to recover the five lost hurricane days. They did get one back on election day. So they're, uh, they're down to four. They're working on that. Were they open then? No. They, they, no, they faced some, some pushback on that one. So they're looking at a couple other different options. and. Uh, they should, by the next meeting, know what, what days they're going to finalize to, uh, to get that in. But it doesn't look like they're going to be tapping into uh, February, April vacations, which is good. Uh, the second item was an informational meeting, one of probably three or four informational meetings regarding the renovations of the Ledger Middle School. Uh, 
Um, there are a couple plans that are available, and if residents want to see them before they attend one of these meetings, and I urge everybody to attend these meetings, it's really important to, you know, be an informed voter because this will be something that you see. But um, on Ledger Patch, they have the, the different uh, proposed plans, and you can, you can download them as PDFs and print them, and it's great. But uh, I did attend that, went through the Ledger Middle School, the school that I went to, and, and uh, saw the needs that exist there. And uh, the plans are, are, are pretty, uh, pretty impressive. There's a couple different variations. Uh, one of them does include uh, a town emergency shelter, which I think is a, probably a big need. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, it was very poorly attended by the citizens. So the residents of Ledger, uh, they need to get the word out that these uh, informational meetings are happening. They're at the Ledger Middle School. And um, it's something that will be coming up soon. That's it. Any questions? For our board of liaison. Other liaisons. I have a WPCA report. WPCA has not met since the last town council meeting, but I, I did want to report on a sewer plant incident that happened, happened during the storm. Um, again, through quick action by a number of people pitching in, um, we averted uh, a larger problem. When the power went out to the sewer station in the Highlands, uh, which is called the wastewater treatment plant, um, when the power went out, the generator failed to start, and therefore the pumps couldn't run, so there was a risk of sewage backing up into homes on that system. Um, and through the quick action of the mayor, uh, Steve Banks, who was the WPCA supervisor, uh, his assistant Wrigley, and uh, WPCA chair Jim Diaz, who actually went to the plant that night, they managed to get the generator started after several hours, and also to prevent, in that period, to prevent sewage from backing up, they used the Everbridge system to notify just the residents in the highlands and ask them not to flush, which takes pressure off the system. And as a result, um, what you do in a situation like that, all towns do this, when, when the system fails, they have to dump the overflow of untreated sewage directly into the waterways, which we never want to do. But that does happen quite frequently in large storms. Um, in this case, we released 20,000 gallons, which is approximately the size of a home swimming pool, which in the grand picture is a very small quantity of water. Other towns were, were dumping sewage throughout, you know, for days, um, all sewage. So I just wanted to point again, um, great work by the town employees and the volunteers, um, and grateful for the use of the Everbridge system. The good news is there was no da damage to the generator. It had some dust in the contacts. They figured that out. They, and so these contacts are what trip the generator and start it when there's a power failure. So that will now be put as a step into the maintenance plan. It's in good shape. There's no damage to it. So that's a well-run plan. I'm thankful to have it. Thank you. Any questions for WPCA? And you will help get some answers to Mr. Lozier. I'm sure many of those questions you can answer. Yes. Um, I, I I think the mayor is going to come because he's been asking okay. questions. Okay. About, he has, about the trailer that yeah. saw yeah. the correspondence yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, he had some other questions, though, in regards to uh, this yes. things yes. like yes. that. Yes. So. Yeah. Report of the mayor. I got a report of the mayor. Yes, I'm sorry. Pension board met this morning. Yes. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have a quorum. That's becoming a bit of a problem. They don't have enough members. We're short one member. We're still looking for someone. But we had the actuarial evaluation report from Siegel. And I felt that we could get it just at the pension board, and they would need to come and give it to the rest of the council. I do have a copy of the report if anybody would like to read the really exciting 35 pages of numbers. But the bottom line comes down to we had a very good actuarial over two years. The um, amount that we need to put in retirement is less than it was two years ago. The assets, plan assets are going up, and we just had a lot of positive things that happened, which I won't really go into because some of them don't sound positive to when you, when you say them, but we actually had a good two-year report, an evaluation report. It's very good. It went, you know, no, money goes down, so the mayor's going to be happy when he goes through the budget because the retirement plan can have less money for the term. So. And perhaps we could, since we're having such successes with our social media, perhaps we could, could you kind of write up, like, qualifications for somebody that would serve on that board? Maybe we can get the word out to Patch and some other places. Yes. Brock and I can do that together because I'm not sure what position is the one that's left. But 
Thank you. Uh, report of the mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'd like to add my uh, my appreciation for the hard work that was done uh, in my absence at, uh, at the beginning after the after the storm. Uh, I know, you, as, as uh, Chairman Davis said, we don't want to mention individuals. But I would like to mention some, uh, you know, specific people. First of all, Deputy Mayor Chairman Davis, uh, my assistant, town councilors who pitched in. Uh, of course, all of our emergency services, police, fire, ambulance, uh, dispatch, uh, our uh, administrator of uh, emergency services. I'll mention his name because he's here. <laughs> uh, our public works and police uh, in getting the roads open and clear. Uh, MIS, again, I think was something that really, really helped a lot. A lot. Uh, our town hall staff, and then some unusual ones, you know, our library, uh, because the library did not lose power. They were able to uh, continue to operate as a charging station. And I guess you'd call it a warming station. Usually it's a cooling station when you have hurricanes. But, uh, so that was appreciated and that was uh, unusual. Of course, the schools and the staff of the schools, as they stepped up to a lot of people to take showers there. Uh, I, I take great satisfaction in knowing that the system is bigger than any one person meaning me, and that uh, all of the work that we did over the past 11 months with CLNP, with our staff, with our emergency services people, the hurricane drill we went through, uh, some of us uh, found it a little tedious at times. Uh, I think all of that really contributed to the fact uh, that we were prepared, uh, people knew what to do, and then people stepped up to some unusual thing. You know, they say at the start of the war, the first thing that goes out the window is the battle plan was the same thing with the hurricane. And, and I know that uh, you made it up as you went along in some cases, but it worked out well. Uh, also, again, communication. There was two-way communication. Uh, communication between the town and residents, and then between the residents and the town. Many of them fielded phone calls. I know as soon as I got back in the office, I started returning phone calls and taking some. And you know what I found is, is our citizens are extremely resilient extremely patient, and, uh, you know, just to use an example of, 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 just to prove the point, you know, uh, if I was out of the office, I would get a rather, how should I call it, pointed message on my machine, you know, where are you, what are you doing, and things like that. <laughs> the minute you pick up the phone and you return that call, the people are like your best friend. And then when you turn the path, when you, excuse me, when the power gets turned on, <laughs> it's like, you know, they want to build a statue to you or something, you know. So people are, are, they just want to be communicated with. That being said, I will say that, you know, we did have some good, su some successes. The Make Safe program that allowed us to open the roads. Um, I, would, I would direct your attention to yesterday's editorial uh, in the New London Day. Uh, it was, it, I think it summed up very uh, succinctly what many of us feel about the response of CLMP. Uh, the interesting thing is the reporter left a message for me, I never called him back, and I would have said many of the things that were in there, so it's interesting that others had the same uh, response. Uh, I think CLMP did as well a job, and I, I would say an excellent job, in restoring power and, and doing many of the things that they said they would. Uh, my biggest problem with them was communication. Uh, it's very, very frustrating when people are calling you every minute, asking you, you know, you know, when is my power going to be turned on? And I realize you can't answer that question, but we want to work with them because they do have crews working, and and I feel very strongly that they should be able to tell us on a particular circuit the estimate. And I told them, you know, six hours, twelve hours, three days. I believe if you can give people an estimate like that, they can plan their lives a little bit better. And I think that's something that we're going to work with them on uh, once the once the dust settles a little bit and we have a chance to, to sit down calmly and communicate. Uh, I believe that that's something that, that uh, we can do better. It was especially frustrating a week after the storm when you had a handful of people. You know, you check the site, there's five people who are without electricity, and you don't know who those five people are. Uh, okay. What? They did. Yeah, they did. And again, their patience, they didn't call. You know, the people are out there. I went up 
to one street, the people had just come in from a swim and, you know, and, and the pond and running and, you know, what's the problem? You know, I'm up there to see what's going on. It's like, oh, you know, yeah, somebody's got to be last. But again, it was, and then, and then Monday morning again, uh, there were some people who were out and had been out for a while. And, you know, I couldn't get, couldn't get a response as to when these people who really, you know, were the longest, uh, were going to get so, Again, I, I think uh, I think overall the town did well. We can always do better, and we're going to work on those areas. Uh, just to echo what's been said about Everbridge, I was at the senior center today. I did encourage them to, to sign up. Uh, the director there is going to work with them, and uh, also, you know, very very important when your electricity goes out. Okay, you all remember this because you really want to. Your electricity goes out at any time. You must call CLMP. If your entire neighborhood goes out, don't say, "Well, my neighborhood's out, so they know about me." They don't. And then, when power is restored, if your home is not restored, you must call CLMP. So there's an 800 number. Uh, it's right on your phone, to, uh, to be on your electric bill. To look at it. And if your power ever goes out in any, any circumstances, call CLMP immediately. Uh, I've had two visits from FEMA since the storm. Uh, one came in and actually started sitting down with their calculator and charts to start assessing the costs. What this one team was doing was trying to determine the magnitude of the losses in the state to see if we could qualify for some type of, of uh, special benefits. Uh, so that was encouraging. And then today, three folks showed up in my office from FEMA. Uh, one from Arkansas, one from Kentucky, and one from Idaho. Uh, <laughs> to just how we doing, what can we do for you, point of contact. So there's a lot of focus here, but I'm optimistic about that because that means there's probably a very good chance that we can recover many of the costs uh, that uh, you know that we that we incurred. Uh, and they and they and they were very encouraging by saying, you know, don't put any cost beyond you know your imagination. They said, you know, the red caution cones you put out on the road, one time put them on, they got blown away. You know, put them on your list. You need new, you need new red cones. So uh, we need to be very, very uh, creative to make sure we recover our costs. Uh, Alton Heights Water Project is moving along very, very well. Basically, Avery Hill Road is complete. <coughs> the line runs from Avery Hill Road down Tucker's Run and also to the tank. Uh, and they have run, it's either 400 or 700 feet on Michael Lane. Now, that is in Algae Heights. So this is well beyond anything we expected as far as what they're doing there. Uh, so we're very pleased with that. Uh, Avery Hill Pumping Station, I'm not as pleased with, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little frustrated, and I hope I appreciate Council of Sounds supporting this. Uh, it seems to me that we need to be able to better for the individual. I, I know the individual that uh, uh, Mr. Lozier was talking about, and she calls me, and when I see her number, I'm just not going to answer the phone. Uh, I, I just, you know, it's very frustrating when people call you, and you can't give them an answer. And the answer that I do have, I wouldn't dare tell her uh, about when we're going to get that compensation on. So we really need to work hard uh, to make sure we're tracking what the next step is in that process. Uh, finally, I, I thought it was going to be mentioned, many people have asked the question about Groton Utilities. Why don't we have Groton Utilities? If we had Groton Utilities, our lights would have been on the next day. Uh, you have to put that in perspective. Groton Utilities services a very specialized and limited community. It's very controlled and uh, it's very manageable. I, I saw the mayor of uh, the city of Groton today I talked to her about it. Uh, she didn't rule it out, but you know, you don't want to take on more than you can successfully manage if you have a very successful system. The last thing you want to do is expand to the point where now uh, you know you're you're over your head. So, you know, I certainly have not ruled it out. I will caution you, however, we all remember the experience that we had with Thames Valley communication and cable. You know, came up into town a certain way, a certain amount, they cherry picked. And, and that's it. So, you know, you don't want a situation like that or a system like that. But I do have the door open. I'm certainly open to discussions, and I speak with her often, and I will continue those discussions. And that's my report. Thank you. Are there any questions?
questions for the mayor? Uh, I just wanted to ask the question that Mr. Lozier asked. Have we considered putting gas in Algernon Heights? I've never even thought of it. Has it, had anybody thought of it? We have had discussions about uh, the extent of gas lines, uh, and, and really, and, and uh, I think uh, Mr. Lozier alluded to the property we own up there, which is the car park. Uh, there are actually two gas lines that come within a certain distance of the car park. That would be very, very attractive if we could bring gas to that location. Uh, some of the other neighborhoods, uh, you know, it's certainly something to look at. Uh, I know there are people here, businesses here in town that would love to have gas right But, I mean, here. with Algen Heights right now, I know, I don't know that you can put the gas light in the uh, water line hole, but we're going to pave it yeah. after all the water lines are in. So if we were going to do gas, now would be the time yeah. to do it. The problem is that you'd have to get the project authorized and, and, and approved. I will tell you this, that I will pursue any grants because the state is pushing this, so I will, you know, I will speak with our staff to see if there is money available. You know, maybe just extending that line, uh, you know, some distance, we could get some benefit out of that. So I will certainly look into but that. But doesn't the gas company need to be paid to put the pipes in? They may. And that's something we need to look at. So they did for the middle school. They just made us pay for the I, I guess the question is, you know, you referred to bring it down Avery Hill Road or Algen Heights. You talk about, you know, is the question to bring it into Algen Heights? I think that's bring it down Avery Hill Road? No, I think his comment was to bring it into Algen Heights because you got a lot of homes there, and it would save them some money, and if we're already going to tear up the road, yeah. it would seem the time to do it is now, and if, if we can't, you know, and sure. it's right there, and it's not, we're going to pave it when we're done, so if we had to dig it up, if it had to be dug up again for a gas line, now's the time to dig I, it up. I agree. Keep in mind that there is an investment required by the homeowner if they have to convert it. You know, the if they choose to, yes. To do that. So uh, it, it's something that we've had discussions about and we're aware of the gas lines there, and we understand, you know, Gales Ferry is very successful in terms of the use of Well, you, you didn't gas answer the question, and I knew there was probably more to it, so I wanted to get that question answered from Mr. Loder while we were here, because I figured that, I didn't think that it had gone over everybody's head. Well, not that I had thought about it, but, you know, I think somebody had. Um, Mr. Marshall. I uh, just want to add on something that the mayor touched on briefly. Uh, when the power goes out, if something in your house was on, do you think it go around and turn it off? Especially if you're using the stove. Uh, if your house is like mine, when you're not using the stove, it's part of the countertop. And you throw mail or whatever on there. We had a house fire, I don't know if it was in Gales Ferry or Ledyard. The people did just that. The stove was on, the power went out, and the five days that the power was gone, the stove became a countertop. Power came back on, the mail caught fire. Uh, they were able to save the house. They didn't lose much. It wasn't much damage. But just something to keep in the back of your mind. If your stove was on, just double check. Make sure it's off before park comes back on again. Thank you. Any other questions for the mayor? Okay. Whole business. Um, admin, are we going to move on the blight ordinance? We are not. I want to make a motion to take this off of the agenda. We made a number of significant changes tonight. That it will need to go back to public hearing. Okay. Um, so we just, um, I'm sorry, to the procedure, do we just take it off or do we vote to take it off? You can just take it off. You can just take it off. Take it off, take it off. thank you. Okay. Um, pardon me? No, they're not no. ready to set up the public hearing yet, so that'll come back to us. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody would like to make a motion to change the, um, amend, the amend the agenda? Hearing none, um, consent calendar? So moved. Second. Um, Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Soms? Yes. Mrs. Ledecky? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Aye. Mr. France? Yes. Nine in favor? Do you want to add an item to cancel the next meeting? That would be, we didn't amend for that, but we only want to add an item to do that. We could. So let's, um, the motion carries on the consent meeting. Cal consent calendar. Um, would anybody like to make a motion to cancel our next meeting? I would like to make that motion to cancel the December 28th, December, November 28th meeting. Second. Um, 
I did ask um, if finance had anything. And I told, finance you, I told you Marcia today and she said no. Did not, so. Um, and nobody else will be meeting between now and then. At this point, at this time, we're um, amending the agenda um, to add the motion, um, which would be item number. Probably 14 and then need 14 down to 15. Okay, item number 14. Uh, Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mrs. Bedecki? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Rocky? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Um, admin number four. I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. <laughs> Kenneth Gear, affiliated of 23 Thomas Road, Ledger, as an alternate member to the Historic District Commission for a five year term. Ending December 4th, 2016, filling a vacancy left by Mr. Ryan. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? I'd, I'd just like to comment that um, Mr. Ken Gear is very active in the uh, preservation of the Gear Hill School, um, very interested in history, uh, does a lot of work for the town, um, and he will be a great addition to the historic district. Martin, would you call the roll? Mr. Sons? Yes. Mrs. Bedecki? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Kowalski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Um, next item. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed assistant to the Director of Parks and Recreation job description as contained in the draft dated November 9, 2012. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Um, yes. Are these uh, new jobs or just rewrites? <laughs> they are uh, rewrites, but they are upgrades. Um, so they do contain new job responsibilities. Uh, they are existing positions, but the job description has been upgraded to, to reflect what they really do. Reflect what they really do. Yes. They increase the salaries. Chairman of Finance? No, it's not. That was from Finance. Yes. There will be a small increase in the hourly wage for these as you agree in agreement with you to do that. We understand that because it's not going to have to ask for that. We'll get that, yes. Any other questions or discussion? I would just like to add a little background that I don't think all counselors are aware of. There's been a history of a number of job descriptions that, due to miscommunication, uh, the union tried to negotiate the job description in the bargaining process, and that's not the proper form. So they actually lost a number of years where they had the opportunity to catch these job descriptions up to reflect the actual duties of the job. So they have finally gone through the process and thank you to Edmund for, for hearing me. Any other discussion? Roxanne, would you call the board? Mrs. Wadeki? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Kubrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. Kranz? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Nine in favor? Zero votes. Motion carries. Uh, next item. Motion to approve the proposed assistant to the supervisor of public health nursing job description as contained in the draft dated November 9, 2012. Second. Any discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Ryan in favor? Uh, next item. Motion to rescind ordinance number 20, an ordinance requiring proof of financial responsibility as condition to obtaining permit to conduct blasting operations in accordance to Connecticut General Statutes 29 TAC 349. Explosive requirements are covered by the Office of the State Fire Marshal Regulations. Second. Any discussion? This was actually brought to my attention by... Uh, yeah, yeah. Essentially, we are... This is covered under state statute. Okay. It obviates the, the the ledger statute, so we're taking it out. Okay. Any further discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Eichel? Aye. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Eichel? Yes. Mr.
Yes. 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 Mr. Allen. Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to finance committee items, agenda item number eight. Uh, make a motion to appoint the Permanent Municipal Building Committee as the Building Committee for the Board of Education's Asbestos Removal and Floor Replacement Project for Linder High School during the fiscal year 2013-2014. In addition, authorize the Board of Education to apply to the Commissioner of Education and to accept or reject a grant for the Asbestos Removal and Floor Replacement Project at High School. And authorize the Board of Education to prepare the schematic drawings and outline specifications for the asbestos removal and floor replacement project at Ledger High School and authorize funding for this project from CNR fund account 21070101-58255 in the amount of no greater than $300,000. Second. Discussion, please. Uh, summary, it uh, follows on Council uh, Allen's comment. This is the fifth year of a five-year project for asbestos removal in the schools. And uh, um, this is the final installment of $300,000 any questions, discussion? Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Gombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. Next item. Motion to appropriate the additional $395 per VOAG student received in grant funding per Public Act 12-116, increasing the VOAG grant appropriation for fiscal year 2012-2013 to the Board of Education capital and non recurring account to be used only for the VOAG program. Second. Any discussion? There was plenty of discussion. Was the, uh, <laughs> when this initially proposed, it was, there was a question what the act said and what the money could be used for, uh, whether it had to be used for the VOAG program specifically or whether it could be benefit the, the students within the VOAG program. As an example, it proposed uh, was to buy psychology books that would be used by the VOAG students. Um, when uh, Bill Merrill came in to the next meeting, he had also done his side of the research and said no, it had to be used for essentially a capital purchase or something that was directly related to the building program, uh, which they have a, a long list of items in there. So the money will be used this year for a one-time purchase, not a recurring cost, and then it will come in next year as, a, as in the budget process of the money coming in the uh, budget program. This year we had already done our budget, it was already approved, and we did not want to we weren't even sure how we could appropriate the money to the school board to use it. So it was the finance committee discussion. We asked them to use it for capital one-time purchases because this is your one time you're going to receive this not inside the budget. So why not let BOAG use it for the things that they always are told there isn't enough money to buy. You know, it's a one-time, you know, like the unexpected present you got. So use it for something that would really benefit the program and they don't need to do that. Any other questions, discussion? Roxanne, would you call them? Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrattan? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mrs. Ledecky? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries number I, I say yes, too. Oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. Eichelberg? <laughs> yes. Well, you did twice. <laughs> Nine in favor, zero opposed. Item number 10. Make a motion to approve overspending by up to $46,551 in the fire apparatus reserve count line 21020501, TAC 54325, to allow for ordering a new 1500 pumper to replace the Ledger Center Fire Department's R11 engine. Second. Any discussion? Briefly, the, um, we discussed with um, Russell Shaw, Administrator of Emergency Services, uh, over several meetings about purchasing the next major piece of fire equipment and how to budget for that. Um, in this case, the amount of money in the capital account uh, is about is $46,500 short of what we need to make the payment. Uh, when they make the order, the payment will be due in the following fiscal year, so we could appropriate it then in the, in the following budget. Uh, the hope and the discussion of both the mayor and, and the finance committee is that the current budget year would have uh, cost avoidance or money that was not expended to have that money available to us in the current budget. 
Didn't the mayor guarantee us that? I remember that was on the record. <laughs> I would have to play. I would have to play the tape back. I would have to play the tape back. But I do recall something like that. Yes. Uh, that, uh, this this fire truck will be re replacing two fire trucks. Right. And uh, Mr. Short did a big spreadsheet of how far out and funding we need to buy trucks in the future. And this truck is kind of being bought ahead of that schedule. So if we don't use the forty-six thousand dollars in this year. We already have to bump next year's amount up. It's really going to make a big thing in next year's budget. So the hope is to find the money in this year's budget. But in any case, we need the fire truck. And then the replacement of the two, the R11 tanker and the other one, will be surplus and, and sold. What is? What is going into reserve? No, I don't think it's going to reserve anymore. Oh. Actually, the current R11 pumper has been taken out of service yeah. because of strains deteriorated. That's a 1989 pumper. The tanker that uh, this pumper will also replace is uh, a 1991 piece of apparatus. We'll keep that in service, but at the point where that one gets out of service, this pumper is actually going to have a calf system, and we think that's going to allow us to start reducing the fleet. So we'd only be running one tanker in town versus two tankers. If that fails, uh, we'd be buying a small uh, tanker uh, to replace it. If it succeeds like we expect, then we may be purchasing a small pumper to get back into the flag lots. Eventually, we want to go from 10 pieces of apparatus down to 8 pieces of apparatus. Currently, each station has two pumpers. If we go down to a one pumper, one tanker type of situation, we'll need one engine company that's available to put it in either department when one's down for no cans. Now, 11, that's out of service now. Is there any hope that we can sell that? We're trying. Uh, we that's put out right. for bids on that. We had a $7,500 minimum, and the uh, bid okay. that came in was for $2,500. Okay. That's the question. Uh, with a damaged frame, it kind of makes it difficult yeah. to uh, sell the vehicle in that condition. You'd have to be selling it for off-road use. It's been pulled out of service because any other questions? Brock Tien, would you call the roll? Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Ludovic? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Gresky? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. And the caver is now closed. Motion carries. Um, items under land use and planning. Number 11. Motion to accept the conveyance of open space set aside identified on the Bitter Street subdivision map 25, block 120, lot 85, 85 Avery Hill Road, in accordance with the subdivision regulations to meet open space requirements. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any comments? This is basically uh, just to follow up for uh, Planning Commission has already approved acceptance of the open space per their subdivision regulations. Um, the deeds already been that would be uh, allocated to the town for uh, for use. It is contingent with other open space, so it's continu continuous with the other existing open space that is now that the town has. Um, and this is merely just a, a regulatory thing for the town to accept land. To, to does it come country. out onto Avery Hill Road? Yes, it does come on to Avery Hill So it Road. allows people to go from Avery Hill Road up into all the open all space the open up there. Space yeah. there correct. Great for the other questions, comments? Roxanne, the roll, please. Uh, Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mrs. Ledeff? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Item number um, agenda item number 12. Motion to accept Abbey Road, Lucian Way, and the extension of Bittersweet Drive into the Town Road Inventory in accordance with Ordinance Number 45, an ordinance amending an ordinance regulation regulating of an addition of any new street or highway to the highway system of the Town of Lincoln. Second. Yeah, I was going to say Abbey Road spells wrong on that motion, but it's spelled right below. Yeah. Um, the history behind this is that we have currently been maintaining these three roads for the last couple of years, first being Madeline. Um, but we are not, since it's not listed as part of the town road inventory, we don't get the matching state grant for from from the state to help uh, pay for this. Uh, so that's the reason why. We're well, Bittersweet wasn't. That's we haven't been maintaining that, but the other two. The other two have yes, but this is all at the recommendation of Steve Maslin. Any other questions? Any other 
Any further discussion? Roxanne, call the roll. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mr. Hideki? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dabrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. France? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Um, at this time, I want to obtain a motion to cancel the um, second meeting in November. So moved, 1128. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Complaints? No, I didn't think I'd hear any. <laughs> Roxanne, would you call the roll? Mrs. Wadeshi? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dabrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Sobbs? Yes. Mr. Sobbs? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, just quickly, uh, does anybody have any items they would like to add to our capital wish list? That seems to be our topic. Yes. I actually have one. After the storm, I had been approached by uh, George up at the, the senior housing, and they had issues when they lost power during the storm. Apparently, they did not lose power up there, but something tripped in the green transformer box out the street, and nobody knew it or checked it. But one of the things that they request is that, as part of the senior housing, at least in the main building, maybe having a generator up there so that the seniors up in that area can have a warm location to go to. <coughs> right nearby. So maybe a generator at the senior housing might be a, something to add to the capital list. Having served as your mayor in this six days, I will tell you that there were many people in many forms of public, of, of town of Ledger who are now asking for generators. The libraries, um, the senior center. So um, generators is certainly an item that we can, um, Roxanne, if you would just add that onto our list and at some point <coughs> we'll have a discussion on that. Um, another item that was storm-related, since we talked about storm-related, you know the really nice sign we had up in Ledger Center, the one that said uh, showers available? Um, the interesting thing about that sign is that because it's so old, it has to be programmed with a computer at the sign. So um, anytime you wanted, they needed to change the words, um, somebody had to whip a laptop go up there and change it. So that item also came up as a... Um, remote control? A, well, there's a, the, the new signs are much fancier than that, and Sergeant Gilman mentioned that. He thought perhaps there were some kind of grants for signs like that. So we'll throw that one on our list as well. Any other items? Yes? How about a permanent pavilion at Erickson Park? A permanent pavilion at Erickson Park. We can now remember this is just a wish list, so um, <laughs> we will add that onto our list. Yes, Malika. Uh, he wants a generator. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, just to follow up with uh, Councillor Allen uh, about the, the electric middle school, uh, just to add something there because it's related to this. Uh, the superintendent gave me an opportunity to speak uh, last uh, Thursday to just inform the, those of the, at the forum that we also have a police station that we're looking at. And I, I've spoken, I speak very often with Dr. Grenier, and uh, one of the things that I think will be important if, we saw, if we're going to sell either or both of these projects is to give people a clear indication of the cost, the long-term cost, the most being debt reduction. Uh, I'm already working with uh, finance director to come up with a chart because our debt is coming down. Ledger is very, very lightly in debt and our debt is coming down uh, rather sharply. Uh, but I think it would be very helpful. You're talking about two projects that are going to probably cost more than just about anything we've ever built in this town. I think we have to demonstrate to people not just that in the near term, you know, we can manage that debt without significantly increasing our budget but also what do you have planned down the road? And I think when you put this, this together, uh, all of these are good projects, but you know, I think we owe it to the people. If we have another project of any size within, I would say, the next five years, it needs to be told to the people now. And we don't come to them two years after they take on this debt and say, oh, by the way, here's the next wave of projects. So, uh, you know, uh, Council Wadecki remembers uh, years ago when we sat down and we did a prioritization. Yeah. I thought we were very successful with that. We got some of the, pri well, we got the top priorities yeah. done. The ones down at the bottom that came mm -hmm. up then shortly after that got defeated. Yes. So I think uh, from a timing standpoint, 
you know, we need to have this plan ready, I would say, in the, you know, in the, in the late winter time frame. But these are all wish list small capital items that may or may not ever come to fruition, but, you know, generators would be something we might actually be able to <coughs> buy through FEMA money or buy through, I mean, I don't, I don't think this wish list is great big capital projects that we're going to be going to the taxpayers and asking for lots of money. And the police station, I'm sure it's not going to be $33 million, right? Look <laughs> <laughs> what happens in Orange. Yeah, I know it's not going to happen in Orange. I couldn't even imagine bringing a project that expensive for the taxpayers well, for yeah. one police station. Everything is proportional. <laughs> Don't laugh at knowledge. You know, until you see the proportional cost of what we're looking at. The, um, the, the positive thing is when I threw the idea about a capital list out there, is um, that we were actually having difficulty coming up with ideas, and most of the ideas are small. So that says something. Right. Um, that, that certainly says something. So, and but, you know, we'll keep talking about this, and at some point we'll, we'll try to prioritize if we have some. Um, we also will be able to figure out if some can be done through the budget, and some <coughs> we could do one small bonding project like we've done in the past, mm -hmm. that or add it to a project that we're going to bond you know, a, a million dollars or something that would do some of these things, or half a million dollars or whatever. Good plan. I have an update. Yes. The, uh, we talked at, in a previous meeting about uh, a sign or signs for Ledyard like, Roads to advise drivers yes. about the uh, Connecticut state law about giving cyclists three feet of passing room. Um, and one of the residents, actually the one who put this in front of us, the Ledyard Galesburg Community Forum on Facebook, um, has has volunteered to do some research and is presently doing that to find what's available, where we can get signs. And we did talk about it in land use. So, good. so that's good. Very good. Anything else under this item? Um, at this time, uh, are we going? Yes. At this time, I um, entertain a motion to enter an executive I session. I move to enter into executive session and to discuss pending litigation concerning Southeastern Area Transit to be included our council as president and the mayor. Second. Uh, Roxanne, would you call the vote? Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mr. Eichelberg? Aye. Mr. Prance? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Yes. Mr. Ratner? Yes. Mr. Sons? Yes. Mrs. Woodhead? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, we'll take a five minute break to sign um, students. <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> Because they spread out, it doesn't matter. They all come to the point. Probably a lot of people.